Hey, hey, everybody, what is up? Welcome back to another Skits Tut. I am Mr. Skits, and we are going to do another tutorial today. Very interesting one about enemy item drops upon death. Very important, pretty cool little thing to do. So, let's just jump right on in. Basically, is what I did is I had created these four little spears, and I just called them pills. Each will have their own effect, health, it's going to be an extra life. And one will actually damage the player if he takes it. I don't know why, I just figured maybe that might be something you, you'd like to see how it works. And to boost the strength of your bullet so that we can increase, we're going to do double damage. You can set it however, but I just want to show you how this functionality works. Once I created them, I basically, the only thing I did was put a circle collider on them, and I made it an is trigger. I then drug them into the pre, and made them a prefab, and once we make the item drop script, we're going to put it on the enemy empty game object, and we're going to create an array. I'll show you how this works, and you just want to drag all of your pills, however many objects you have, you want to put them in the array and that's another thing we're going to be covering is arrays in this one and it's basically like a list a little bit different and we actually we're actually going to want to put the health pill script on the health pill the hurt on the hurt the life on the life and the weapon boost on the weapon boost pill and then you'll make it a prefab but whatever so we had, I discovered a bug in our in our player health script and I went ahead and made a correction so with the player lives and the player health you want to add this line of code right here and this will ensure that when you get an extra life if your lives are more than so in other words let's say that we're doing five lives if you get an extra life and it goes to six it wouldn't be apparent that it's going that it's increasing your bar but when you die you will still have a full life bar so you put this in right here and this will make it equal to the max so that you never have more than your max amount of lives And we did the same thing here for the player health. And this is just in the update so that it checks every frame. Then we wanted to go ahead and modify the enemy health just a little bit by adding a public static bull to it. And I named it enemy is dead. And I initialized it as false because obviously he, we don't want him to be recognized as dead if he's still alive. So upon the startup that's pretty much that and I'll show you where we use this in a minute so let's start off and look at how the extra life works incredibly simple script we're gonna use collections and we're gonna use unity engine and basically upon the startup of the pill we're gonna create a lifespan for it so I made an IE numerator so basically after 10 seconds the object will just disappear and that way it's not on screen for too long. You have 10 seconds to collect it or it's gone. And then we had an on trigger enter because like I said, we made the collider and is trigger. And this is how you will do the collision on that. So if the player touches it, we're going to add to the player lives plus one. And then we're going to destroy it so that it's not there anymore. Health pill pretty much works out the same way same concept with the lifespan and if we collide with it I chose to add 33 percent of the life of whatever the max health is so even if we get more max health it'll always give a third of your health back and you can set this however you want this is where you do it and also if you had um, sounds audio or anything this is where you'd want to install that in all of the pills whenever the collider happens the collision excuse me the weapon boost same basic concept and 
The only difference is in player move, we're going to power up the weapon. We're going to set that to true. So once again, we have to go and take a peek at player move. So if the weapon power up is false, our bullet damage to the enemy is going to equal 20.5. So without the power up, it's just normal. Now if weapon power up is true, we want the bullet damage to go to 41, which is double damage. And then we're going to start the co-routine of the power weapon down. So in other words, after 10 seconds, the power up is over and then it'll just set it back to false. So you have to touch another pill for it to be true. And then you got 10 seconds of um, increased strength and you set it down. Now, for the player bullet, I did modify the script a little bit. And if you notice right here, the damage that we do is based upon the player moves bullet damage enemy. So if you look, if you look here, then you can see that this is the floating variable that I had created. And this is going to pass whatever it equals as the damage from the bullet right here. So that's pretty much how that works. Um, I also updated the collision because what was happening here is it was getting the parent of the image. But the empty game object enemy, it was still moving around and stuff so it was a bug that I found and the correct way to do this is we will send the enemy is dead is true so that now it can now it can drop the item and we haven't got to the item drop script but that is where this will be on is on the enemy health I mean it's on that script so anyway the correct way to destroy the actual thing is to get the root game object which would be the enemy right here so before we were getting this information we were getting its parent which was this enemy rotation controller and it was leaving the enemy still alive and moving around so now with the root we're getting the root parent and we're destroying it and that's the correct way to handle that for our code now, for the actual, let's look at the enemy health real quick. Just to make sure. Okay. So the item drop, we were good on that, by the way. I just wanted to check something. So anyway, we're only using Unity Engine for this one. We're going to create an array of game objects. And this is how you would declare it we call it item list we want to know what the item index is going to be and then we want to be able to count how many items are inside of that list and then we need to know the transform of the enemy so that we can drop the item when he dies exactly where the, that enemy is located so that's how we're going to do it on start we're going to iterate through all the game objects and this you can literally name anything I just named it item and we're going to say in the item list so all items each item is going to run so it's going to run it's going to add two total items in array by one each time and when it gets to the end then it'll store how many are inside of this variable so now the item index is going to equal a random range from zero to whatever the number of items that is in the array since we have four items we're working with this will equal a 25 percent drop rate of all items now if you wanted to do something to where you create a number that's in between 1 and 100 I mean 0 and 101 you can actually set it to where if it equals 0 to 25, 26 to 50, 
51 to 75 and you can do 76 to 100 and that would give you a 25 percent drop rate as well so you can adjust it if you want health to show up more you could do 0 to 40 if you wanted to do you know a 40 percent drop rate on that and you can do like 90 to 100 if you want an extra life to have a 10 percent and you just have to do the logic to read it for now all I did was just use the index so it's always going to pick one of those four and object zero if you notice in the list element zero is the health pill one would be the hurt pill two would be the life pill and three would be the weapon boost and you could put them in any order you want it really doesn't matter and you can also have it you know pick two items you know if you really wanted to you just have to run this code twice and I'll show you how it works so enemy health enemy is dead if it equals true then we want it to drop an item so the first thing we want to do is set enemy dead to enemy is dead to false because we only want it to drop one item since it's in the update it'll just keep on dropping them so now we want to find the enemy in its exact position. So we get its transform, and then we need the, to get the child, and then we need to get the grandchild, and then we need to know its transform. And the reason is the same as always, is right now we're getting the transform of the enemy, and then we're going to get, we're going to get the child, and then we're going to get its child, which is the actual enemy object, and we're going to find out what its transform is position actually is so it's going to get whatever this transform position is and it's going to store it in this variable so now we're going to instantiate whatever is the item link the item list and the item index so basically whatever number zero through four or zero through three excuse me so whatever number this becomes is the item that we're going to make instantiate and we're going to do that at the enemy's position its coordinates and we don't need it to have a rotation or anything so just we want it to be normal now this might change if your object isn't round you might want it to be rotated a certain way and you can easily add that but you're just going to want to do it right here and that is pretty much it and um that's all we need to do now in the next one we're gonna speed things up a little bit we're gonna get the enemy actually spawning so that it's the enemy's not just gonna be here on the screen when you hit play he's gonna spawn at a random location on the board and maybe a couple enemies will spawn out and you got to kill him and then we'll set it up to where it'll happen in waves and we're gonna make it kind of interesting and we're gonna actually get ready to to destroy all of the enemies and then we need to know that we've completed the level and we're gonna move on to the next level yeah baby we've made it <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you found it very useful please click like and subscribe and I will see you in the next tutorial